Hi guys, Nain here, and welcome to whatever number we are for this week's reading vlog. It is sunny. It's 9.40am. Uh, I got up at like half five this morning. In fact, I had such a stupid night's sleep. Let me show you my sleep on, on my Fitbit. There we go. That was my night's sleep. I don't know why I'm updating you on my sleep really. I guess because otherwise you won't believe I'm awake at 9.40am or whatever. We have Biggie. He's down. What are you doing? You're upside down. Look at him. What is that cat doing? Who sleeps like that? Yeah, I don't think he's enjoying the hot weather at the moment. Okay, so what I've been reading, I finished reading what I was reading at the end of my last reading vlog, which was this, A Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare. It's not my favorite of his plays, but it was okay. I, I, I don't know if I'd go and see it live purely because there are so many other Shakespeare plays I want to go and see. I think it's because it's a comedy rather than one of his tragedies and there's something about a good tragedy that I really enjoy. So I gave it a 3 out of 5. I did really enjoy the notes at the end actually, but I mean, how do you rate a Shakespeare play anyway, you know? Uh, then I read Frederico Garcia Lorca, The Dialogue of Two Snails. So this is Penguin Mini Modern number 42. I might as well read you the blurb. A dazzling selection of the beautiful, brutal and darkly brilliant work of Spain's greatest 20th century poet. From his beloved gypsy ballads to pieces appearing in English for the first time. And I did enjoy this. I liked his poetry style. We also had some like illustrations like this. And then, so for example, the poem going with that. The Six Strings. The guitar draws tears from dreams. The sobbing of lost souls seeps from its round mouth. And like the tarantula, it weaves a vast star to catch sighs, which float in its dark wooden reservoir. So yeah, really enjoyed it to be honest. Probably like a 3.75, something like that. I'd definitely read some more of his poetry as well. And I think he got assassinated as well, which... I didn't actually know, I didn't know that, because it didn't, there's no like bio of the author or whatever, but there were some notes at the end of it. And in one of these notes, it just casually mentioned he'd been assassinated. What did it say? Let me check that. Yeah, Cradle Song. Lorca wrote this lullaby for Mercedes Yebers, who died while still a child in May 1936, three months before the poet's own assassination. And I was like, what, he got assassinated? How did they not mention that anywhere else? But um, yeah, it, it seems like it should be more of an af more than just an afterthought, but whatever. And now I'm reading Going Solo by Roald Dahl, which is the sequel to Boy... Bleh. I said that right, I don't know why I did that, I just... I said Boy weirdly. It's the sequel to Boy, which was his first volume of autobiography, and this is like volume two. So I believe it's when he was like in the RAF during the Second World War and stuff. It's got some photos and whatnot in. Let me show you a photo of him. Here he is, in his, in his Navy, or no, his RAF uniform so I'm really excited about reading that and in the meantime I am now I am going to go and watch Charlie Charlie Charles Heathcote doing his three years on booktube Q&A and uh, get a little bit of work done but I'm kind of ahead because I did some work over the weekend as well so I might even go out and go for a little walk later we'll see seems like it's a nice day all right I finished all my books and did my filming so now I'm gonna go and have a nap because I've also finished all my work and I'm tired all right let's do that I'm making sweet pepper fajitas but what's exciting is that I need to use the pestle and mortar all right so the peppers are nearly done we have the tortillas in the oven here we have really really thin salsa looks all right though I'm sure it'll be fine Lime, sour cream, guacamole, homemade tomato ketchup, salt pepper, and that's where the fajita filling will go. So I should start moving this now. We're also watching the Limehouse Golem. Oh, hello, it is uh, Tuesday, Tag Tuesday. So today I posted the Cats and Books tag featuring Biggie Cobain, so that was exciting. I am still reading Going Solo by Roald Dahl, but I'm very near the end. It's been really good actually, it's mo mostly about his like experiences as an RAF fighter pilot. I'll probably be doing a review on this because I've flagged a few bits, although not for a while actually, but uh, that's fine. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna rate it now actually, because I'm only 20 pages from the end, so it's a pretty solid, I'm gonna give it a 3.75. Um, 
I think Boy, his first book, was better, but um, going solo is still good. Next up, I am going to read this, which is Yuko Tashima, Yuko Tshishima, Yuko Tshishima of Dogs and Walls, which is Penguin Mini Modern number 43. And then after that, I think I'm going to read Richard II by Shakespeare, William Shakespeare, and... Uh, See if I prefer that to a Midsummer Night's Dream. And after that, I'll probably read whatever number 44 is of these now. Because I do my rule, which I've told you about in a video before, where I switch from doing an author that I've read before to one that I haven't read before every time I pick up a book. And the rest of the Penguin Mini Moderns are all authors I haven't read before. So I need to read someone I've read, some then one of the Penguin Minis. Someone I've read, Penguin Mini Modern. Someone I've read, Penguin Mini Modern. So yeah. Also, I made uh, like curried potatoes with asparagus, curried sweet potatoes with asparagus for dinner. Becca is at work, so it's now like 25 to 9 and she won't be home for a couple hours. So I think I'm going to have a beer, watch a bit of booktube, and I'm just doing some writing. I've hit about 55,000 words on my memoirs, my, my life in books. So that's exciting. Yes. All right then. I won't hold you any longer. Actually, I'm going to go for a shower. Yeah. Biggie. What are you doing down there? You lying amongst the books? Just lying on a pile of clothing. All right, look, he's down there. Yeah, I know, I see you, mate. I can see you. What do you got there? A box. Yeah, is it your vegan kind beauty box? Yeah, what's inside my box? What's inside your box? Let me have that then, you, you have a look through. Show, let's show us what you got. U tan and tone tan gummies, the world's first edible tan supplement has taken the beauty industry by storm, going viral overnight and selling out frequently since launching. The patent-pending tan gummies were developed by healthcare experts using tried and tested traditional vegan ingredients and customer results have been nothing short of incredible. It's a bit weird. Yeah. Face wipes. Face nice wipes. Ones. That are There's not a anything naughty in them. Raw organic, the pure hydrating three in one facial wipe. Yeah. Bursting with pome fresh pomegranate juice. Raw organic, pure hydrating wipes. Lock in hydration and invigorate your skin. What's mm. that? Sukin pawpaw ointment. It's our favourite favorite Australian natural skincare range. Alongside fermented pawpaw, the formulation uses castor seed oil, illustrious for maintaining soft, supple lips and skin. By gripping moisture from the air and holding it close. Sweet pea, is that a little candle? Yeah. Harper's candle, sweet pea, soy wax candle. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it smells good, that. That is Miss Patisserie Watermelon Bath Slab. It creates beautiful colours in the bath and leaves your skin feeling soft and lightly scented. Oh, that's that one. Oh, that's really cool. Okay. So that must, that must How be... How much is that? Bath Slab, mm. 550. That's not bad. It's pretty like that'd make a really good uh, gift or something, wouldn't it? Considering so. that like um, luscious stuff is yeah. quite expensive. Those too. tan gummies are a bonus item by the looks of it. Oh. So that there is is that the glitterized goddess glow glow up highlighter? Yeah. Creamy and golden with a super luster effect. Head turning makeup for serious makeup lovers. These beautiful pigments are handmade with love and will give you the glow of your dreams. 20p from this went to Animal Free Research UK. I don't know if I mentioned my my box. Did I mention my box? I don't even know if I remember to film this now, but I also got a box like this, except mine wasn't beauty products. Becca gets the beauty products. Hi, Biggie. And I get the snacks. Although the, the two most expensive items in my one were uh, like these, these strawberry bubble things you put in champagne don't really do champagne. That was like the RRP of a third of the box. Uh, there was a pizza dough thing. That's very nice, very glittery. And uh, I'd rather just make my own pizza dough. That's probably why I didn't show it on the camera because I was like, oh, there's not, there's not really anything worth showing here. But uh, yeah. Hello. Ba, 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 ba. Oh yes, you give me a good lick. Yes, oh let me get the belly. <laughs> there's Becca's car parked lengthways because it's broken down and this is High Wycombe by evening
book follows a coroner. Look who's come to sit with me. To figure out the mystery of I think he just wants the uh, cool air, to be honest. You're watching Mindy, aren't we, Biggie? That sounds really good, and I cannot wait to read it. These are all the books that I'm hoping to read. Hello. It is uh, 20 to 1 in the morning. My, my sleeping pan screwed again. Really, really messed up. Um, I finished reading Richard II by William Shakespeare, which was, it was all right. I actually talked about it on, on the radio, which I'll have included some footage of by this point. But um, basically, because I don't know too much about Richard II in general, it was hard for me going in to really follow it. There wasn't an introduction to the play either, so, you know, I was concentrating more on the language so that I could follow what was happening as opposed to on the language because it was inherently beautiful. But there were a few lines that I really enjoyed and that I'll probably, I'll give it like a three out of five, 3.25 maybe. Um, I didn't particularly enjoy reading it, but I'm glad that I have read it because I can tick it off. And now I'm reading uh, Javier Marias, Madame du Defond and the Idiots, five sparkling, irreverent, brief portraits of famous literary figures, including libertines, eccentrics, and rogues from Spain's greatest living writer. So at the moment, uh, I've just read about Jana Barnes, who I, I believe was very, uh, briefly pursued by a nice nin, who, uh, whose book I did not enjoy. She's just writing about Oscar Wilde at the moment. I have uh, Emily Bronte next, so that's good. And after that, I think, I think I'm just gonna read, Indis uh, sorry, Lynchpin, Are You Indispensable by Seth Godin. So it's a non-fiction book. I've already read a bunch of Godin's work, but um, I figure I'll just pick this one up next, I think. So we will see. Um, yeah, went to the radio earlier and did that. And what was the other thing I was going to mention? Oh, we've been listening to our audiobook. So we've been listening to The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And this one is read by Stephen Fry. So we've got the Stephen Fry audiobook. And it's certainly much more enjoyable than the uh, when we did The Sign of the Four. So, yes, we'll probably listen to some more of that over the weekend, I guess. Depends when Becca's working. She's in bed now, obviously. She has to get up in five hours. And I'm also working. So on that note, I'm going to go and do that. And... Uh, carry on watching Hardback Hoarder. Is that because it's cover? I love Once Upon a Time and it's one of the only shows in the history of ever that I've actually like watched. Hello everybody, Biggie. Here. And I've discovered one good God, I've discovered a new booktuber, uh, uh, Edward Lorne. Uh, He's done a whole series of uh, like uh, Stephen King. King he basically does these videos where he relates Stephen King books back to the Dark Tower. Uh, uh, also made carrot and courgette bread. Look at that. It's uh, five to five in the morning, and I'm making carrot bread. Yeah. So let's go stop. Right now I feel like I can send a soap to heaven without a death note pass. I've got no lights around the globe. That's an escort bar of death. It is uh, 9 03 in the morning and I haven't been to bed because my sleeping pattern's messed up. I accidentally s I've slept for over 12 hours two nights this week, so um I think I can get away with it, you know. There's an open mic this evening that I might go to if I'm still awake. It's just around the corner at the art centre. Uh, so that's that starts in like 10 hours or something. Uh, so I might go there and play some music. We will see. Becca's at work all day. She's, she gets home at 10 p.m. So I've done, you know, I've made some nice things. I think I showed you earlier, actually, that I was making my bread. Did I show you my bread? Anyway, I've made some bread. It's uh, very nice. I've got this comb for my beard as well, look. Oh, I'll probably comb my beard now. That's how long my beard is getting, that it needs a comb. So, I finished reading Javier Marias, Madame du Defand and the Idiots. I actually think the, uh, the, the Bronte, which one was it? Emily Bronte. The essay on her was probably my favourite, and I've never read any Emily Bronte. So, um, it just, it, it went into Bronte's story, basically, and... Um, it was all very sad. There were two sisters who uh, died before, like who we think of as the Bronte sisters. There were two who died kind of in their childhood. They had a brother as well who was an alcoholic. And uh, yeah, I don't know, just pretty bleak. And then I think it said that Bronte. Was it Emily Bronte? I've already forgotten. 
Yeah, it was Emily Bronte. That Bronte, she died when she was 30. Let me read you the last paragraph, actually. It was very moving, reading about it. During her illness, she refused to have any treatment or to be seen by a doctor and once again plunged into long silences, prepared to let nature take its course, although nature proved far from benign. On December 19th, she insisted on leaving her bed and getting dressed. Then she sat down by the fire in her room and started combing her long, abundant tresses. Her comb fell into the flames, and since she did not have the strength to pick it up, the bedroom was filled with a smell of burning bone. Afterwards, she went down to the living room, and there, sitting on the sofa, she died at two o'clock in the afternoon, having refused to go back to bed. She was only 30 years old, and she wrote nothing more. It's kind of creeping me out, because I'm 29, so hopefully that doesn't happen. I, where's my comb? I've lost my comb! I'm gonna die! <laughs> Oh, it's fine. It didn't go into the fire. If that had gone into the fire, I would be screwed. And now, now I'm reading Lynchpin by Seth Godin. Are you indispensable? How to drive your career and create a remarkable future. It does make some really good points and stuff that I'm kind of, it makes me glad that I'm freelancing now. Because, uh, for example, he's saying when you're at a company and you run a business, say you have an employee who's worth 30,000 a year. Uh, and then one that's 25,000 a year and one that's worth 20,000 a year and that's kind of a typical spread of abilities How do you choose what to pay them? You know like and he was saying you can't just meet in the middle and pay them at 25,000 because you need to make money on those employees as well so maybe you pay them 20,000 a year but then that means that the 30,000 a year person the linchpin is being you know way underpaid and so um, that was quite interesting it also did make a weird Something that made me laugh. Let me find it. Yeah, so it says here. What they should teach in school. Only two things. Number one, solve interesting problems. Two, lead. Because a lot of this is about how we're taught at school to just follow the rules and how that doesn't really work anymore. Especially in today's age, you know. Anyway. Solve interesting problems. Interesting is the key word. Answering questions like when was the war of 1812 is a useless skill in an always on Wikipedia world. It's far more useful to be able to answer the, the kind of question for which using Google won't help. Questions like what should I do next? And I'm here like, well, when was the war of 1812 is a useless question. It was in 1812. On that note, I better go and I'm going to go do some more work and watch some more battle rap. Alright, so I'm going to an open mic night, but uh, I cocked up a little bit. I fell asleep and uh, woke up 25 minutes after it started. So I've just got ready in a further 12 minutes. It's five minutes from my house and I think we'll be fine. I need to get some money out as well. Let's go do this.
Ball Butt Geek and over through here in the kitchen I have just made vegan mac and cheese with like it's got little bits so this here it's a vegan meatball we have uh, some like some jalapenos chopped finely chopped jalapenos and it just looks pretty badass so I'm gonna go eat this now because I have a hangover because I'm a fucking idiot look look what happened Oh no. Current state of their marriage is really not a spoiler oh. to say that their marriage is not as perfect as it seems. And I read this book. I liked it. Challenges, we need a break. Do you want to start with baby food first? So they're going to blend Bud Light and baby food and then drink it. Mmm. <laughs> Reckless eating on YouTube. Sandwich it, sandwich it. What? It smells like corn. <laughs> It, it, it does. The cream. Oh, oh, this is not good. Chris, cheers. We're going to that. Cheers. Yo, it's Sunday. Um, yesterday I was really hungover because I had far too much to drink at the open mic. I do this every time, man. Every time. So, uh, yeah. Yesterday was a bit of a write-off day. I had lots of sleep. I made a den in the living room. I turned the sofa here into like a bed <laughs> and then fell asleep for like four hours after I'd already had like nine hours of sleep so there was that that was nice uh, slept okay last night I actually read a bit more of um, uh, the passage as well I'm on like page uh, 920 or something out of about I think about a thousand total I'm actually hoping to finish it in bed this evening um, and then after that, I'm going to read some Asimov as my bedside book, I think. But I don't know. We'll see. Because I might start reading it and actually bring it through to be my main book if uh, if I enjoy it. The problem that I had with it before was that the print was too small, so I couldn't really see it. So, uh, I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm still reading Lynchpin by Seth Godin. I'm on page 166 of 244, so about two-thirds of the way through. If you look at the top of it, it looks like I'm way more than that through though. It looks like I'm near the end. <laughs> I don't know. I'll probably finish that today anyway. And then I'm going to read a couple of Penguin Mini Moderns. Might listen to some more of the adventures of Sherlock Holmes this evening when Becca gets in from work as well. I also want to make... I'm going to make um, like popcorn falafel. So I don't know how that will turn out. But I mean, I've got recipe for it. So we'll try it. I'm currently just exporting now a review I did of Going Solo by Roald Dahl. I've actually, because I tend to respond to like comments on my channel and stuff uh, while editing videos 
and I've almost edited all of the videos I've filmed and don't necessarily have anything new planned so I might fall a little bit behind with comments but it is what it is so um, yeah other than that all is good I'm trying to watch some butchy videos now but my internet is terrible you see the spinny wheel god damn it I don't know why I'm so zoomed but whatever I'm trying to watch uh, cats and cameras Booktubeathon vlog, even though I don't really do Booktubeathon, but I really like her channel, so I make exceptions. It is uh, quarter to eleven. Other than all that stuff, I'm actually mainly doing some work, um, just because I can. Here is a biggie. Hello. Hello. How are you? Do you have anything to say to the internet, biggie? Leave me alone. I'm trying to sleep. Can I get your belly? Ah, I got your belly. Oh, you're such, you're such a poser, aren't you? Oh, is that nice, is it? Yeah, good boy. Let me get your chin, actually. Oh, yes. Oh. How's that? Is that good? Can I shake your paw? Shake your paw. Is it comfortable sleeping upside down, mate? Do you like that? Yeah. Okay. Okay, buddy. When I'm reading in bed, by the way, we turn that on. So this is what I might read. I tried to read this for Time Hopathon a while back, which uh, was set by Aoife from Fred Weezy Died Laughing. I don't know if you can see that. Look how small the bloody... You can't see that. It's so small, it won't even focus. Yeah, there's that, and I'm this far into the passage. All right then, mate. We're gonna go now. We'll see you later. Bye, Biggie. Say bye bye to Biggie, everybody. Goodbye. You must assert that in such words. It's making popcorn falafel and listening to Sherlock Holmes. Once put the box out upon the sun. Lots of washing up. The first consideration is to remove the pressing danger which. Oh yes. Here we go. Popcorn falafel with homemade hummus. I'm going in. Oh no, it's Monday. My hair looks crazy because I washed it, <laughs> so it's still a bit wet. It's all very fluffy. Uh, yeah, it's Monday, so I'm going to end this here. I look like a crack addict. Jesus Christ. This is not a good angle for me. This is just what I look like, unfortunately. Yes. Because it is Monday, I'm going to end this here. So, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Oh, P.S. I have like 10 pages left on Lynchpin. I don't know how this has taken me so long to read. What's going on? It's because I've been sleeping loads. Slept a lot yesterday. Bye bye.